John Lennon, there is no doubt in your mind about the fate of uh, Paul McCartney. Uh, no, it's a joke, isn't it? I mean, Paul isn't dead, you know, and if he was, we would have told you, you know. We'd be the first to know. Well, that's it. He's, 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 he's got a baby. He's got a baby. He's recording music for Ringo's film and producing Mary Hopkins, so he's very much alive. Then. Well, how did the rumors uh, affect both of you at this point? It's a joke to us. No, it's just a joke. It's so hard to uh, believe that something like this would be going on, uh, similar to uh, like a James Dean thing. I can't understand it because I can understand the James Dean kind of, he still lives crippled but won't come out, you know. I mean, there's some kind of idea you could guess, well, maybe, maybe. Yeah. But Paul McCartney couldn't die without the world knowing it. Mm -hmm. The same as he couldn't get married without the world knowing it. It's impossible. He can't go on holiday without the world knowing it. How? How could he die without no, everybody knowing it? Paul McCartney is in England now. Is he Is he at home or uh, is he on a holiday or what, John? He's not on holiday. He's working. He's, he's recording uh, a group called the Ivies for doing some background music for Ringo's film, The Magic Christian. Mm -hmm. And I want to be plugging my own stuff, not Paul. So come on, let's get going. Well, since you're doing a lot of plugging, uh, what is uh, John Lennon up to? Well, we've got a new single, folks, <laughs> called Cold Turkey. <laughs> which is out in your shop shortly. We've all had cold turkey. Don't believe the rumors <laughs> about this one either. We have a plastic, oh, that's the plastic Ono oh band, cold turkey. John and Yoko, Eric Clapton, Klaus Foreman, and Alan White. We have an album, a live album of the plastic Ono oh band, which we made in Toronto, Canada, the rock and roll revival, which goes from blue suede shoes into sheer madness at the end on the other side. So that's the product, and we also have a new John and Yoko album, which isn't uh, Plastic Ono, which is our more freaky stuff, as you call it. The follow-up to Life of the Lions, which did very well in the States. And it's called The Wedding Album, which consists of an album and lots and lots of pictures, bits, uh, cartoons, drawings, photographs. It's more like a book of the record, and that comes out in about a month. So we have two albums and a single, folks. Yoko, how do you uh, feel about all this excitement? Well, I mean, you know, it's always been productive, and actually, the thing is that there's so many ideas every day that it's very, very difficult for us to sort of uh, uh, not be constipated, you know, in the sense that there's so much backlog work, you know. Yeah. Uh, I mean, for us, you know, three albums now at this point, it's not uh, half as much as we want to really... Out, you know, It'd be nice to be able to produce a single every day and an album once a week, yeah. like a color supplement, you know. That'd be really groovy. Listen, how do you people gain all the ambition, I guess that's the word, and desire, and uh, magnificent, don't you? Uh... Oh, let me tell you. <laughs> Everybody has all the ambitions. Everybody's full of ambitions. Yeah. And uh, it's like, uh, once I gave George the advice of, on songwriting to when you start one, finish it. And I think I got the advice from Paul or working with Paul. But it's like anything, if you have an idea, the only, the best way is to try and do it right away. Otherwise, you won't do it. And that's called ambition, you know. Ambition is, is a wrong word, really. Because in case of John, because, you know, I mean, like us all, we're all just doing something natural, you know. And the thing is that uh, it's almost like a physical thing. I mean, you know, if you don't eat, you know, you feel hungry, you know. It, so you want to eat, it's like that, and uh, it just comes very naturally to him, because like if he has 20 songs in his mind, you know, and he, he doesn't want to clog that in his mind, he just wants to get it out, that. so it's more basic than, you know, so-called ambition or anything, not that kind of social state sort of thing. John, let's go back to uh, talking about the music of the early days, and, and if you'll permit me to go and address ourselves back to uh, uh, the, this Paul McCartney um, rumor and, and death, if you will. Um, as a matter of fact, let's talk all about this symbolism that's going down in these albums and dress ourselves also to the possibility of death and what you recognize in these albums. Well, I tell you, I'm not aware of any of them, you see. I only read about them this morning in the paper, uh -huh. and I can't remember them. Something about Sergeant Pepper album cover and uh, Abbey Road album cover. Yep. I don't see the connection or how Paul could have been dead. We made Sergeant Pepper four years ago. You know. John, I understand the cover for Cold Turkey is, uh, might, well, we might consider that to be symbolic if we get into it. This is the cover for uh, Cold Turkey, yeah. right? And this is the advert we're using. Now it's two schools 
which is, uh, um, what are they called? X-rays we, yeah. that were taken of us in hospital after we had a car crash. Now, by the time this gets to America and uh, the Deep South and the DJ gets it, he'll say, here it is, finally, it's Paul McCartney's skull. You know, but it's me and Yoko, actually, and I'm using it to uh, advertise our latest record as the, the sleeve cover. But when you read, read that into it, by the time it's got to New Orleans and the DJ's looking for something to talk about, he'll say that this is a, a sign of death and that Paul is gone, or John and Yoko are dead, you know. Well, what about the line on, uh, on the Sergeant Pepper, I will bury you? Oh, on Sergeant Pepper, the same as the obscenity that was meant to be on, on a loop at the end of Sergeant Pepper didn't exist. John, I find it hard to believe that uh, some people are supporting this rumor that's going around here that if you play some of your records backwards, um, there are some messages to it, and, and people can hear these. Uh, what, what do you have to say about the backward movement of these records? Sure, if you play anything backwards, you're going to get a different connotation, because it's backwards. I have no idea what Beatle records sound like backwards. I never play them backwards. In other words, you're saying there really is no death wish or any death moment in all these Beatle records. The connection besides some of these things Paul's death. Could some of these things have been like a death rumor to uh, Paul's death back there in 1966? Well, how did we take the photograph for Abbey Road? with me with a beard and looking as I do today, which I'm Paul looking as he does today, walking across the road, when he'd been dead since Pepper. What did we do, stuff him and shave him? You know, or what, how could we do it? I don't understand what it's about at all, you know. I don't, Paul isn't dead. We don't often sing or refer to death, I don't think so. And uh, I don't... What about the Abbey Road thing, John, where, uh... Uh, the bare feet of uh, of uh, Paul McCartney sort of would indicate death to some. That's the first time I've ever heard of it, you know. I mean, so what? I mean, Paul walked barefoot across the road uh, because Paul's idea of being different is to look almost straight but just have his ear painted blue, you know, something a little supple. He liked to go when we did press conferences. We all were a bit like that. We used to go on stage with just, say, one polythene bag on one foot and nobody might notice it, just us would be laughing. So for Paul, he decided to be barefoot that day, walking across the road. But when you first glance at the album, it looks like the four people or whoever walking across fully dressed. But he just, that's his little gimmick, I all. Yeah, I didn't even notice till I got the album. I didn't notice on the day he was barefoot. We were just uh, wishing the photographer would hurry up and it's getting too pe many people are hanging around. It's gonna spoil the shot and let's get out of here. We're meant to be recording, not posing for Beatle pictures, you know, that's all we were thinking. And I was muttering, come on, hurry up now, keep in step. And all that, you know, and, it's, and they said I was wearing a white religious suit, you know. But I mean, did Humphrey Bogart wear a white religious suit? All I've got is a nice Humphrey Bogart suit, you know. What's religious about? They said George was dressed as an undertaker, and rubbish, and Ringo or something. I, you know, it's just insanity, but it's great plug for Abbey Road. Uh, it's just coincidence that uh, you dress the way we do in your album covers. Uh, what motivates you to wear what you wore today? Now, as your station uh, controller said, we, we need a publicity handout of all the DJs on the program, yep. on, the, on the radio. Uh, you decide that morning what to wear for the photograph. I decided to wear a white suit, and we all decided individually what to wear for that day for the photograph. So. In essence, John, what you're saying about the Beatle greatness, and it is great. Thank you. In essence, because of this greatness, John, that the Beatles themselves have become the essence of this, this great rumor. Yeah, it's just all that mysticism like James Dean is still alive in a chair somewhere and that Bob Dylan had died. I mean, but you can understand the Dylan rumor a bit more because he had that big crash and nobody knew where he was, you know. But it's all that intellectualizing you know, or looking for hidden meanings. You know, it's just gone crazy, that's all. John, has this really affected you mentally, physically? Uh, the same with Yoko Ono. Uh, how has this affected you? It's water off a duck's back, you know. It's just the, the most stupid rumor I've ever heard. It, it sounds like the same kind of guy that blew up my Christ remark, where the remark had been out for six months in England before anybody had said anything about it, and this guy blew it up. John Lennon and Yoko Ono from London.